Welcome to another week, an edition of Family Life with Mama Rita. I hope you are taking very good care of yourself, especially those of you in Africa. People are assuming that the COVID is gone. Please take good care of yourself. I don't know what is happening, but it looks like we need to pray more. Just when we are about to relax and we think everything is over, then another variant comes up. Please continue to wash your mask. Hey, continue to wear your mask. Wash your hands and then have social distancing when you go out. Please, the world needs you alive. The best is yet to start. Don't die now. I don't want to lose you. Because if I lose you, there'll be nobody who'll be watching family life. So please, let's all take very good care of ourselves. Last week, ooh, the guys loaded. I had Reverend Major Retired Joe Chum. And I promised you that if you are good, I'm going to bring him back. I think you were good. So... I am still here in New York. And this time, guess who the new guest is? Ooh, Mama Betty Chum. And pleasure is mine to welcome um, Pastor A Reverend and Pastor Mrs. Jo Chum. Please welcome. Thank you, Mama. Hey. Thank you, Mommy. The messages I got last week, you have no idea. People are loving you. And they kept saying, Mommy, bring him back. He's so loaded. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show one more time. Thank you. Mama Betty, you are welcome. Thank you, Mommy. You look beautiful. Thank you. And I can see the gold inside. It means you are still <laughs> celebrating Jubilee. Yes. You don't look 50 at all. Thank you. Last week, it was the last week or last two weeks, Mama Betty celebrated 50 years. Jubilee. <laughs> hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> Please start taking vitamins. Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Uh, you need it. Yes. After 50, things change. <laughs> I don't want to scare you. Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> anyway, um, I've always loved the story of how you met. I've always loved that story. Please, tell my audience how you met. Thank you very much, Mommy. Um, I think I'll, I'll ask Betty to say it, because I've said it a couple of times. Oh, I want to hear it from you. <laughs> oh, and then okay. she will come in if you forget something. <laughs> 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 because you told Mommy. <laughs> um, we first met each other in 1982. Wow. When um, we moved from where we used to live in Osu, my father retired, so we moved to Labadi. And I, was, I hadn't gone to secondary school yet. No. We were both went to secondary oh, school. Okay. So we used to study together. The mother asked her to come, so she would come to my house at night and we would study. Wow. And this is that, before secondary before school. Before secondary school, yes. So I think the following year, I sat my common entrance and okay. I went to the secondary school which were still coming to me to study. And I remember one day, she was given an assignment to write an essay. And she came and I taught her the essay and it was judged the best in the school. Wow. So she was, it was read to the whole school. And that made my stock to go very high yes. in her family. <laughs> and so the mother was very, very proud of me. And we continued like that until such time that she also sat common entrance okay. and went to and uh, passed the exams. But she had chosen Ebri Girls and other schools, and she qualified for Ebri Girls in my school, Laboni, as a second choice, and then another school. But fortunately for me, and unfortunately for her, she had gone to visit the, the daddy somewhere. And so when the results came, and the process, we were going through the process of admission to secondary school, the mother came to me and said, this is the, well, the mother had so much confidence in me. So he said, this is what is happening. She has passed every girl's, she's got the letter, and Laboni, I told the mother, no, every girl's is too far. We can't monitor her. So <laughs> let her come to my school. I'll take care of her for you. And monitor her. Uh -huh. 
So I honestly didn't have any. Okay. Yes. Sure. Because we're, we're like sisters. Mm. Uh, sister and a brother. So the mother went with me that day to Laboni. Okay. So I went with her and then she did all the processes, paid the school fees and everything before she came back. So she was coming back thinking that she was going to a real girl's factory wow. at that time. So, so you started leadership a <laughs> long time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So anytime she did something, they say, SP, your sister, your sister. So we're very, we're there for very, we're there practicing very good things in school. And she was doing very well because I was, my eyes were always on her, making sure that she was studying. She sure was in good association. Spirit was telling me that this is mine. I took good care of it. And so, I graduated from, um, when I completed sixth form, I went to the military academy. Okay. So she was still in Laboni, I think from four, from five. Then, in military academy, we're asked to, just as a very young cadets, we're given a chance to go home one Thursday. Okay. To bring our girlfriends for a dance. And I didn't have, Any so when I came home, the next day, I went to school, I went to academy, Saturday, nobody came, so we're punished. Two weeks later, we are punished actually, for not bringing, for not bringing anybody any, any girl. for entertainment. Yes, those of us who didn't have. So I, the following two weeks later, we were given a chance to come back and look for a girl and bring. So when I was coming home, I met her. I said, Ah, Abena, there's a, in my school. I want you to come there. He said, No, go and tell your mom. My mom. I said, Okay. So I went to the house. I told the mom that there's a program going on in the academy, and we are supposed to come with a girl. So. And the mother said, ah, she's your sister, so go with her. Wow. So that Saturday, I gave her money and everything. So she picked a taxi and came to military academy. But as we were sitting down that very day, I just heard a voice. I said, I'll marry you. And that was the first time. I said, I'll marry you. She said, you told her? Yes. I remember very well. I said, I'll marry you. She said, OK, then we have to go ahead and tell my mother. And let me finish. Can you me. imagine? <laughs> so I, I. Then I, she. She was still in Laboni. She was still in Laboni. She hadn't even finished from five years. Wow. I think she was in form four or something. And I was a, 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 it was in, that was in 89. Mm -hmm. It's 990. And so she, she, we, I, she started. Form four, 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 that would be great. I think great, 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 great 10. Well, great 10, 10 years. Yeah. Wow. So I graduated. Then I, I was posted to my unit. My darling, I hope you are listening. You see, sometimes when make our daughters miss good men because we either think they are too young they are still in school and all that once you are um supervising them and making sure that they are not being naughty they are not in the room alone and all that and you are guiding them i believe that it will go a long way to help our children sometimes i've met parents who said you are too young, uh, somebody can tell you, I'll marry you. And then by the time we realize the person is done with secondary school, is done with university, out of university, um, they, get, they get jobs and they still don't have anybody. Then now you are running to pastors for deliverance. <laughs> Betty's mom, I think, was very wise. Yes. Wow. And she was a very good girl too, because yes. immediately you told her, she said, then let's go and see my mom. Uh, so she went, I went, I think she left in the academy, so she came home and told her mom. The mom said, she has to wait. I said, yes, I told him I have to wait. And so I graduated and I was posted to Sunyani. Mm -hmm. Then she, she completed form five, okay. continued to sixth form. Okay. So because I was in Sunyani, she planned that in sixth form, she would do her national service in Sunyani when she's done with sixth wow. form. Wow. So when she was done with sixth form, she was posted to Sunyani. But unfortunately for her, the day I think the day she arrived, I had been deployed to Cambo uh, to oh. Rwanda, and so for the one year for her national service, she stayed in Sunyani without me. Wow! And when I came back, she had decided to stay in Sunyani. Now I think that was in '94 mm -hmm. to '95, and so she had and she had always had a purpose of becoming a banker. Okay. And so she had started working with the rural bank, wow. a, a rural bank in uh, the place, and so we decided that then we need to formalize everything wow and so we saw the parents i saw my parents and then uh, we went to accra and then did all that we're supposed to do and had our very very little wedding in sunyani oh in sunyani yeah we had our wedding in sunyani so her mom and everybody, everybody came came to sunyani <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we, did, we, have it, we had everything there and we started our family. So I see it as a hard work because I did a lot for her. I taught her, I used to help her to shower and a lot of other things that I don't want to say on the, on the line. Wow, you showed everything. Everything, how to brush your teeth and a lot more. And today, this is the, my hand. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mama Betty, is, is there anything he left out? Or no. is there anything you want to add to it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I saw him as a big brother. And then, of course, um, I grew up from a single family, parent home. So there was no father figure. So yeah. I was also looking up to him. So everything he said so is right. So brother, brother, father, father uncle, teacher. teacher, coach. So I call him life coach. Wow. Wow, I love, I love these stories. Because of that, we did, we did the same subjects in A level also. Can you imagine? Because I have to teach her, and I have to teach her what I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been teaching her since she was in primary school? Primary school, oh, yeah. garrison, yeah. Garrison, yeah. garrison through lab morning, sixth form. And even all her degree courses we did together. Because we understand that we have to support each other. Wow. I believe this is why you've come a long way and this is why your marriage is very solid. They go to the club, meet somebody, and that is it. Yeah. I love this. I've heard it. I never get tired <laughs> of listening to the story. Who? <laughs> Mama Betty, I'm going to ask you a very sensitive question. Sure. Um, I know you've gotten over it. My topic, actually, my, the new series I want to do is about pregnancy, about children, the different kinds of um, children we can have, um, adopted children, biological children, stepchildren, you know, all that. Um, when you marry without children, what to do, how to feel, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so today is actually an introduction to what I'll be doing. How long have you been married? We turned 26 in April. Just 26 this. in April? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Do you have children? No. I don't have any biological children, but um, I've raised uh, my, I raised my brother as a child. Okay. I mean, I raised him, he's my younger brother because I was like 12 before he was born. And so I felt like my mother gave birth to him for me. Okay. And so I, I was the one that bathed him, did everything for wow. him, like the mother, because my mother used to go to Togo um, after she was a teacher, but she will also have to do other things because she's by herself. Mm -hmm. So then uh, my brother now, Pastor Gideon, was my baby. Wow. I don't have any biological children, but I, I, any time I think about Pastor Gideon, I, I see him more of a child to me wow. than a brother. Wow. I remember your 50th birthday. Um, he's saying that you are not just a sister um, to him, but he also a mother, mm. because he remembers when he was also in Labonin Secondary School, when you were paying his school fees. Yeah. Sometimes your whole salary yeah. will go into his school fees. So he doesn't just see you as a sister, but also sees you as a mother. So who you've done well? I can see. So. Yeah, yeah, you can. Sure. So, um, so I'm the first born of three children. Okay. And so growing up, even when I fin completed sixth form, I had good grades. Okay. But I told myself, I'm not going to go to university right away because I wanted to support my mother. Wow. Because she was just by herself trying wow. to raise all of us. Wow. So I put my university on hold. And that's when I look for a, a job in a bank. Wow. And so that I'll be able to support my siblings. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I've wow. always done that. Wow. You, you, 
you've been a very, very good first boy. Very good first boy. So, how have you been able to sail through uh, marrying 26 years with our children? I know women are moving from deliverance center to deliverance center, from shrine to shrine. Um, every month they are crying, they are angry at God, they are angry at everybody. I believe there's somebody watching us today who's been married with our children. How were you able to sail through it and how are you coping? Thank you so much for that. Mommy, I want to uh, thank God for the Apostle General and Royal House Chapel and yourself. Uh, because when I got married, I think two years right after I got married is when we started uh, Royal House Chapel. So okay. it's been 24 years. Okay. And proud to that, the first two years was very, very um, challenging. <laughs> challenging. Uh, I could Cause cry. especially yeah. from our side of the world, yeah. mother-in-law yeah. is waiting, your mom is waiting, aunties are waiting, yes. and people are counting. And any time they see you, they are looking at your stomach. Some want to ask questions, they don't. Some people are bold and they'll come to you and ask you, so what are you waiting for? Um, when are my grandchildren coming? And I don't know how you did it. Yeah, like so I said, first two years. Yeah. First two years was very challenging. Uh, those were my years of crying and going to um, the hospitals and doing all the surgeries. And I was really eager to have a child. I've always wanted a child. I just love children. Mm. So I've always wanted a child. But uh, the first two years um, they didn't happen. And God uh, directed our path into Royal House Chapel. Okay. And for me, I think my strength that I, I, I have right now, what I've been through, I, I gained the strength from just being a member of Royal House Chapel and sitting under the feet of the Apostle General and, and you, Mama Rita. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, the prayers, the word, mm -hmm. like sometimes I'm coming to church and I'm crying, but as soon as I get to church, and I hear Apostle General preach, it's like I have a child already. Oh, wow. Like I get so much faith. And so that really has helped me just finding myself at the right place at the right time. Mm. Um, so, I mean, when I came, I, I received a lot of prophecies. I've been prayed upon um, that I'm gonna have a child. I remember one day the Apostle General told me, you're gonna have a lot of children. And I, I believe it and I keep, believing it and I keep believing it. But then um, as my husband was in the army and he kept traveling all the time and at some point we'll go to, the, uh, uh, to see gynecologists mm -hmm. but then he's not there and then my doctor would say this it takes two to do this. So every time you come you come and we do some medication and then your husband travels and so it became very very um, challenging for us and so one of these days that's the reason why I decided to travel to okay. America um, he had gone to one of his trips and and then I said like you're saying people are asking you questions uh, when are you going to have children mm -hmm. and all that so I said let me go into hiding okay yeah so that's when I decided and I started talking to him I, did, I think I want to travel outside and I was thinking that America is everything. When I come here, everything um, is everything's going to be. No, I, I also believe in their medicine because I did okay. my research. Okay. And I said, oh, I think when I come here, I'm going to be successful with this treatment. Um, and I was praying that at some point that he will retire mm. or leave the army and then he will also join me. So I came here two years before he came mm -hmm. here. And one of the days I was in my room praying and crying and praying and crying. And then I, fall in, I fell into a trance. And I saw a very, very huge um, man, very huge. Mm -hmm. I remember this very clearly, in white. And he told me specifically, stop crying for children and pray for others 
who need children. Wow. That I shouldn't pray for myself again for children. I had come here, life was rough, and I was in my room. I used to fast and pray a lot. That's when I got that revelation. So I told God, okay, I mean, if this is from you, then I'm going to pick one woman that I was trusting God mm-hmm. with back home in the military. I don't want to mention name, but I said, I'm going to pray. If you have called me to pray for other women, then I'm going to use this person as, um, as a point, a of, point of reference. Oh, as a test case. Yes, as a test case. So then I, I began to pray. I was praying for her, but I began to pray for her more. And I, I told God, God, I want to see this happen for her so that it can confirm that indeed you are the one that I saw and you told me to stop crying mm. about children. And mommy, lo and behold, I was over here and I heard that she's taking seed after so long wow. of trying to have a child. Wow. She even came here to have a baby. Wow. And I was there to Aww. be part of her outdoor. And so I think I got my healing after that I got that revelation. With prayers and, and being one in the dream that stopped crying for children. So I think that began my healing process. Wow. And, and, and my faith in God and my trust wow. in God. And I think that's wow. where that And happened. I know after then you've prayed for so, so many, many barren women yes. to have children. Yes. I've seen it so many times in your church and yes. so many times in your ministry. Yes. I saw your relationship with your brother, son, mm-hmm. uh, wife. You know, how you prayed and stood in for yes. them through the pregnancy and all that. Wow. I'll come back to you, but Reverend Joe, in all of this, how did you feel? Um, first time Every time. man would want to have kids and see the wife pregnant and see the wife, you know, with children. How did you feel? Um, of course, like you said, every man, every man will want to have kids and mm. see these things. But my point is that the first thing is you should ask yourself, why am I getting married to this person? Mm-hmm. Even before I became a pastor, okay. my aim was not to get something from her, okay. but what to make her happy. Okay. In marriage, we don't enter into marriage for what we will get, mm. but what you dispense. Mm. When you give... That shows your love. The Bible mm. says, for God so loved the world mm. that he gave. Mm. So when you love somebody, you give. Mm. So my, my, I didn't go into the marriage expecting her to give me kids. Mm. If it came, fine. But rather to make her happy mm. and in turn gain my happiness out of it. Mm. So even though I was not even going to church, it was something that didn't bother me at all. What mm. I always wanted to see that I come home and she'll tell you, when I come, she's sad, crying, I get mad. Mm. Because I don't see why you should cry. Mm. Like the Bible says, Elkanah told the wife, am I not enough for you? That's what I felt. And so it was not anything that I thought of Mm. twice. Mm. But my aim was to make her happy and also to protect her Mm. against family. And so my mother will tell you, I I never allowed anybody to ask me about our child, why we don't have kids. Because that is not anybody's business. To me, it was between us, mm. and I didn't expect more than that than to expect love from her. Wow. So it hasn't been anything, I, I honestly tell you, I never even took time to pray about it. Wow. It hasn't been something that I have bothered myself praying mm. for, God, give mm. me a child or mm. something. I am very happy the way I am. Mm. But another thing that I considered when I was even not in the Lord was, and I expect that men whose wife are not having kids, mm should always ask themselves because it is not one person it takes two to have kids yeah it could have happened to me that's right that the doctor will have said my sperm count is low low and yeah. i can't have kids does yeah. it mean that my wife should leave me okay or my wife should go have a kid with other parents mm. another person or my wife should be worried about me mm. or be angry at me and so i always look at it from that perspective mm. that if it is me what will she do? Mm. She'll have to comfort me mm. and make me happy and let me know mm. that she likes me just the way I am. Mm. And with that mind and mm. with that idea, I told myself, I won't. Mm. Number three, as I came into the life, I realized that whatever God does for you, mm. he has a reason. A reason. 
and I believe that if we even had case, we wouldn't have come this far mm. in ministry. Because mm. when we're moving out of America again or something, we wouldn't have, and I don't think we'll have had time to mm. do all these things. Mm. So God himself knew what he did. Mm. And I, I say categorically that I'm happy that she's saying that God, God answered our prayer. Yeah. Sometimes we don't understand when God answers prayer. Sometimes yeah. you don't see the tangible thing you are asking for. Mm. But God heals you. Mm. That now he gives you that heart to accommodate the situation that you are going through. Mm. And so to me, God answered our prayer those years. Wow. Because he gave us, for me, if other, in other relationships, the man will be bothering them. The woman came to see me. And any time she sees a period, the husband will be so angry. Mm. So angry. And so she used to come to our house. I used to be in the military at that time. And asked me if I could talk to the husband wow. to accept her the way she is. So for Mama Betty, God answered her prayer long ago okay. because God gave me a heart, the one who is supposed to bother her. Wow. But she didn't see it at that time wow. because it's never been a problem to me. Okay. And I'm happy the way wow. I am. And that's how we are supposed to see our wow. partner because we don't expect perfection. God has, and honestly, God has blessed us in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so why should I be bothered if mm. my mm. wife is not able mm. to? I, I'll come back to you. Are you done? I'll come back to you on this one. Mama Betty, yes, listening to how you met, it means that Reverend Joe, your husband, was actually your first boyfriend. Yes. So um, you married as a virgin. Yes. Um, you didn't mess around. Um, you didn't enjoy with other men yes. and all that. Did you or do you feel that God has disappointed you, that maybe if you have messed up and sleeping with all the guys in Laboni Secondary School or when you had gone to Sunyani, messed up, do you think, do you, uh, uh, is there a time in your life where you ever think about that, that God has disappointed you and God has let you down? I had thought about that before. Okay. Because, like, when I was growing up, I prayed a prayer and said, the first man that I meet should be my husband. Okay. That was a prayer I prayed, and I believe God answered that prayer wow. because that's him. And so at some point when uh, we were not able to have a child, I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like, what, why is this happening to me? Uh, I see people, like, in, uh, where we come from in the military, people sleeping around with other people, like in the Laboni Secondary School, like mm. you said. Mm. I didn't do all that. So mm. I was asking myself mm. and I asked God. I used to ask God those mm. questions mm. until that encounter. Wow. And then I think God shut my mouth. Wow. So I stopped asking. But before, I used to ask okay. those questions a lot. Wow. So it means that God and church has played a big role yes. in this. Yes. Because I believe, but for church, but for that encounter, um, um, in God telling you, shut your mouth, stop praying for your children, so. stop praying for other bar barren women. I believe, but for that, maybe, I don't know what would have happened. Maybe you would have been divorced and uh, thinking that, oh, your luck could have been somewhere else and all that. So it means that church has played and God has played a role in this. Yes, definitely. 110%. Wow. Yeah, because um, like you're saying perfectly, I would have left or... So what Reverend Joe hates is the crying and, and all those things that we do. Like women that are looking for children, mm -hmm. uh, we get into a mood. And what my husband hate, hated was go, me going into that mood. So then at some point, I remember one time he said, okay, then I should leave. And then he also, everybody, maybe when you go somewhere, you can have a child. Or uh, when I go somewhere. So because I don't want to see you in this mood wow. uh, anytime. Like he said, he, he was, I thank God that he was content with me. Wow. And, and that's like he said, it's a blessing for me mm. that God heard my prayer. Mm for giving me somebody who understands me and was content with our condition. Mm -hmm. Because like I talked to a lot of women that it's, it's very challenging for them. So uh, my thing was God, 
if you have given me that healing or heard my prayer that my husband is not at my neck yeah. like other men are at other women's neck then my job is to pray for people who are in that category that um, their husbands don't understand them and they want the marriage to be dissolved or because a lot so, of people yeah. are divorced yeah, because, because of child issue because of child issues yeah. wow wow reverend joe how have you been able to work out your relationship your marriage your friendship in spite of children a lot of people think that children uh, make up the home children make the uh, marriage sweet and happy if i go home and i come back if i go out and i come back and I see children, then um, I am happy. Or when my wife is pregnant, um, goes to the labor ward, brings me a son or a daughter, then I fall in, in love with her more. How have you been able to work out your marriage such that, I mean, people look at you and they desire to marry. People, people just love your marriage. I mean... People watch you from afar and they desire that, oh, how can there be um, such friendship between my husband, my wife and I? How have you been able to do it? And like, just like I said before, I didn't enter the marriage looking for anything. Okay. All that I needed was a lifetime partner okay. to enjoy life with. Okay. And that is what I have. Okay. Wow. And this decision you took even before you became born again, even before you became a church person. Yes. And so to me, it is nothing that, I don't expect anything more. Wow. So I don't so see my wife So with without as, children, you are happy. I'm happy. I'm not short of, I was, I saw her, she made me happy. Not a child that she was going to be, give to make, will make me happy. Okay. And so if she attracted me into marriage, what more do I expect? Children are just blessings. They are byproducts wow. of marriage. And so the, 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 whatever it is that attracted me to her hasn't changed. Okay. And so I didn't have to expect anything more. Wow. If something came, fine. Mm -hmm. If nothing came, it wouldn't decrease my love. And I don't think that my wife should have a child for me to love her more. Okay. That is a, a misconception. Wow. And anybody, to me, anybody who thinks that way, that if my wife gives birth, then I'll love her more. If they're children in the home, then I would love to go home more. Ask her, I go to work. We don't have kids. I'd rather come home early. When we even in the military. I could, when I was out, when I was out on peacekeeping, I can fly to come see her for two days and fly back. Wow. When others with wives and four or five kids will not even go home. Will not even go we'll home. Not, so it is the mind the and mindset. the relationship and the value you have on, the, on, on your partner. I used to come to the U.S. For, because I would have to travel five days, and I have, maybe I have ten days. Okay. I have to travel four days, four days in traveling because okay. I'm somewhere, go to about four countries before I get here. And that four days back, so I have to come for only two days. And I may spend around $6,000 or $7,000 to get here. But I'll come. But my colleagues who have more kids, more, <laughs> they will not come. So I don't believe that the kids. children... You decide what makes you happy. I like that. Happiness is relative and it is defined. I like and that. And it's connected to the person who is happy. Oh, wow. And as much as somebody will drink to be happy, I will drink and I will, I will throw out. And so to me, and I should tell you, when I come home and I say I'm okay, wow. I got to be home all by myself. I always tell people I'm, I'm, I've adjusted to solitude for a very long time. Oh, wow. I can be in the house the whole day by myself. And I am happy. All wow. that I'm looking for for you to come home. Wow. And that is how we have lived. And wow. we are happy the way we are. Wow. I hope there's somebody listening to me. My darling, don't let children define your life. And don't let children define your happiness. With or without children, you can be happy. With or without children, you can enjoy your marriage. We watch them from afar. We, we, I have known them 
Mama Betty and Reverend Joe for, for a long time. And we see that they are happy. We see Reverend Joe genuinely loves Mama Betty. I mean, genuinely. You can see it in everything he does. Genuinely loves her. Genuinely respects her. Genuinely honors her. With or without children. People have been married 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And all they are doing is sitting down. Waiting for the children to come before they will be happy. Sitting down. Waiting for the children to come before they would enjoy marriage. Sitting down, waiting for the children to come before they can have fun. My darling, before the children come, you met your wife. Before the children come, you met your husband. Enjoy each other. Have fun. And one thing I tell couples, we are not going to go to heaven with children. Yes, children are a blessing. If God gives it to you, praise God. I asked somebody, um, are you disappointed uh, that you don't have this? He said, mommy, why should I be disappointed? I mean, there are so many things God has given to me. God has given me life. God has given me a good job. Um, through school, I passed my examination through school. I have life. I can breathe. Why should I think and brood over the others that God hasn't given to me? I had one message. Um, God is the God of what is left. Yeah. We are always looking at what we don't have. And we are judging God by what we don't have. But my darling, you have more than... You have more than God has done so much for you. This COVID period, I was chatting with somebody on Sunday and he was telling me, he said, Mama Rita, I work in the hospital and the hospital in which I, I am, every day I see more than 40 people dying. I mean, I see it. Mm. So if I am not dead and I am still alive, some of my colleagues died. But if I am alive, I need to be grateful to God. I know you don't have biological children. In other words, you don't have children of your own. But you have fathered so many people. Last week, um, Reverend Joe was telling me how you go for the graduations of every every church member who graduates yeah. from nursery i don't know how you call nursery here yeah. pk pre -K. Pre -K. Pre -K. from pre-k oh pre pre-k pre pre-kindergarten pre pre oh pre-kindergarten okay so from let me use your term from pk uh, pre-k pre <laughs> <Hey, Randy. laughs> from pre-k <laughs> through university yeah. you you go to their graduations, you celebrate them, you are there for them. It means that I want you to tell somebody, you don't need to go to the labor world. You don't need to have your biological children to be able to father people. You can father people, just like you said, you fathered your, your brother, you bathed him, and you were there for him, you paid school fees. Tell people, that with or without biological children, you can father. And I believe that uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, you don't miss anything because you are celebrated as a mother and you are celebrated as a father. Reverend Joe, before we go on a break. Yes, um, like you said, we don't have biological children. And I know your home is always full with people. <laughs> yes, that's one of our daughters. Wow. Who is pregnant and she's with us. <laughs> we are looking forward to have our grandchild. Wow. Uh, we don't have biological children, but parents have a pride in certain things they do for their kids. Okay. Like graduations that yeah. we are talking about. 
Mama Betty has gone to a lot of graduations where she's recognized as the mother wow. of, the, of the graduand. Wow. And like I said before last week, there's a valedictorian who's one of our members. The father never went, the mother never went well here. So Mama Betty had to go and she sat in the wow. chair as the mother. As the mother? As the mother and was given all the honors as the oh. mother. I think that is every father's pride to walk the daughter on the aisle. That's right. And I say to the glory of God, I can't count the number. I have to even... Ten um, stand down. Ten uh, stand ten down. Ten down, some, most of them. Wow. I, in Maryland, I, when, when I came here first, people were inviting me to come walk them every wow. time. I got to a point, I told my wife that I don't think I, I can be driving up and down to walk people. Down and the aisle. Down the aisle because, Pastor Joe, I want you to walk me. Wow. I want you to walk me. What is more than this? Wow. And so the joy that comes with fatherhood, to me, I've experienced it all. Mm -hmm. We brought Pastor Gideon up as our own child. Wow. And so I didn't bring him up as my wife's brother. Okay. I disciplined him when he had to be disciplined. Wow. And so whatever I would have done with to my child, wow. I have done with him. Wow. And so I don't think I lack anything. And that's, some, that's what sometimes when I'm counseling people, I tell them, don't think that you've not seen me having a biological child, so I cannot teach you how to bring up your child. Mm. I have had a first-hand experience. Wow. I've enjoyed every privilege as a father, wow. and I don't miss anything at all. Wow. I rather appreciate God for giving me life up to this time and mm. giving me that honor to do it. Mm. Mm. Mama Betty. Yes, um, like mommy, you can love. There are a lot of people uh, that walk through our doors that they have biological mothers but they are not there for them. Wow. And the stories they tell us um, dealing with their biological mothers, mm. sometimes I ask the question, are you sure this woman gave birth to, to you? you? No relationship at all. Wow. So sometimes I so, feel like... Um, let me break in a bit. My darling, I hope you are listening. You can have a biological child and not even have a relationship with that child. Yeah. There's no mother-daughter relationship. There's no mother-son relationship. Yet, you could have somebody who is not your biological child, and that mother-father, a hey, mother-son um, or mother-daughter relationship with it, where the father-son and father-daughter relationship will be there. I saw my my husband walk my my daughter down the um aisle during her wedding and she wanted me to be part of this she said mommy um i don't believe in just fathers walking their daughters down the aisle i believe you and daddy have done an equal job and i want both of you to do it it it, it is like you are saying the joy and the pride of every father is the joy and the pride of every mother to see their children marry. And this, I have seen you do so many times. Mama Betty, please, sorry, continue. <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying the two of you. Yes, so I tell myself, maybe, maybe God um, brought me to this point for a reason, because I've, uh, I know I'm not um, bragging, but I've impacted and I've accepted and adapted and welcomed people that have some weird relationship with their mother, uh, that their mother will not be there to celebrate them, their mother will not be there to just, just being there for them yeah. as a mother. I've had the opportunity and the privilege because I opened my heart to love. Yeah. Uh, sometimes women that are looking for children, uh, they have resentment. And I thank God that I, 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 he healed me from that proud to get in here when I preach my, ser my sermon, trusting God unconditionally. Um, proud to get in where I am right now by the grace of God through the Apostle General and Mama Rita and Royal House Chapel. I was, anytime I see a woman pregnant, I panic. Oh. Proud to this wow. place. But then when God healed me, that is gone. So when I, I see you pregnant, I, I, I'm just... Yeah, joyous so, um wow. especially when i pray for you or i wear your crown for wedding or wow. in it that you be i have a book that you have i have to pray for you too i see wow. that you're pregnant so that joy that i mean that healing that god gave me uh, has helped me to be able to love 
unconditionally mm -hmm. and show them that if your mother is not there, I will be there for you. I will do whatever the mother has mm -hmm. to do for you. Mm -hmm. And I think my church can testify to wow. that. Wow, wow. Who is getting interesting, but would have to go for a commercial break and we'll be back. Welcome back to Family Life with Mama Rita. We went on just a short commercial break. If you are just joining us, my guest today is Reverend Major Rita Jo Chum. Um, you know, I even forgot to introduce the two of you because I did it last week. I'm assuming that everybody knows you, but for all you know, new people are joining us today. Well, um, Reverend and... Um, pastor Mrs. Jochum are the pastors, senior pastors in charge of our New York Mission Royal House Chapel, Latter Latter Rain Center, Latter Rain, Latter Rain. That a Drew Baby and I may have Latter Rain Center. Um, they are the senior pastors there, and Mama Betty is the Royal Ladies President of latter rain center and they are doing so well i mean so well for what i have seen and what i saw this weekend i'm telling you there's a father and there's a mother in the house well we are looking at um children marriages without children and the marriages with children and this is what i'm going to do within the show you know i don't know how many weeks this will take me if there's time i'll come with some of um especially um not biological children because biological children will always have something to say about their parents i'm going to come in with um adopted children i'm going to come in with um stepchildren i'm going to come in with people that um have been raised, you know, to give us testimonies about the parents, to know that um, whether you have biological children or not, um, you can father a child and you can mother a child. So welcome to Family Life with Mama Rita. It's getting very emotional, but I'm really enjoying it. Mama Betty and Reverend Joe, I don't know if it's right to ask you this question, but most people have children, not even for what they will give to the children. In other words, for the sake of bringing children into the world and taking care of them, and you know, paying school fees and all that. Most people who have children are looking at the future. Um, when I'm old, um, somebody to take care of me um, when I'm old, somebody to help me um, when I'm old. You know, people are rather looking at the future for themselves rather than the lives of the children. Do you ever sit down to think when we are 80 years, we are 90 years, if we go beyond 90, who will be there for us? Do you ever think about that? Mama Betty, you first. Um, naturally, sometimes that will cross your mind. From my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, so when I relocated here, I left my mom with my brother, Pastor Gideon. And life also brought Pastor Gideon here. And we ha I have another sister. That the one my, after you. The one after me that my mother gave birth to and raised. And so 
I was expecting that it's automatic since yes. the two of us are now here that as your mother that you take care of your mother. But that did not happen. Mm. I had to have meetings with her. I said, this is your mother, whether she's sick or not. She is your mother. Mm. You would have to live with her. Nobody can take care of your mother than you. Mm. But still, she did not agree to our proposal. And we had to look for somebody wow. to take care of my mother wow. while we were here. Wow. So, so I believe that um, whoever you, you help or raise or even um, invest in, it's not guaranteed that they will take care of I you. Like that. It's not guaranteed because I, I like have that. a personal experience. So you just have to pray and trust God that even the people that you didn't best them, but you have taken care of them, hopefully one day they will also uh, help, um, help you when you need their help. But it's not always guaranteed that your biological mm. children mm. will take care of, mm. of them. And I, and I don't mm. think I, I'm the only one that have that story. Yeah. I've heard most stories mm. that mm. Uh, children are neglecting their wow. parents. Wow. So. Wow. I, I also know of, you know, stories that um, even people here, you see them in big mansions, yeah. big cars. They are eating, they are throwing food away, and they don't know what their parents are eating back home. Yes. I mean, they never, I know somebody, um, you know, we have um, a ministry um, of senior citizens, yes. um, 65 years and above, and sometimes it's pathetic when these mothers and these fathers come to you and all they are asking for is food. And you know they have children. Um, so why are your children? Um, my children have neglected me. I don't even know where they are. Some of them are saying that uh, my children are saying I am a witch. Yeah. So they are not taking care of me. And these are, some of them are 80 years and above. And they live on their own. Yeah. But for Royal House Chapel, that we pay some of them their rent, we pay medicals, and we get them food, I'm sure they'll be, they'll be on the street or they'll be dead by now. Yeah. So um, what you are saying is so, so true that um, you can have, you can have um, a biological child and the biological child will not be there for you. I, I know of a fact that there are many children um, that do not take care of their parents. But, my darling, the Bible says that honor thy father and thy mother so that your days will be long. In other words, if you want to live, if you have to walk in perfect health, if God must give you long life, it depends on how well you take care of your aged parents. Your parents are there. You are eating. I'm in America. You are here in America eating hamburger, throwing chicken away, <laughs> throwing milk away. <laughs> you are throwing parties here every week. I know people who are throwing parties here every week. People who are clubbing every week, yet they don't care what their parents are eating back home. Your father's roof is leaking in the village. Go and repair it. <laughs> Otherwise, God's wrath will come over you. Yeah. There's... Um, one thing I always say, um, when I had Nadromo, my mother-in-law came to live with us. And I believe that God is blessing us because we took good care of my mother-in-law. She lived with me for 22 years mm. before she passed away. Mm. No longer that even in her death, she's protecting us, she's covering yeah. us. The kind of dreams people are having over my mother-in-law protecting us. It's, I mean, you, you have no idea. Yeah. You have no idea. Uh, my parents are still alive. My father is alive. My mother is alive. And I keep telling my sister, I don't know how many more years they have. I won't wait for them to die, to go and paint their house, mm -hmm. read tribute, and go and cry crocodile tears. I won't wait. Today, 
when they cough, I am running. Mm -hmm. Whatever my parents need, as long as I can, I can afford it, I would provide for them. Please, let's learn to honor them so that when they are going, they would also impart blessings upon us. I believe my mother-in-law left some blessings yeah. for us. I believe so, so much. Um, after my mother-in-law left, our lives have not been the same. The church, not the same. Our anointing, not the same. Our blessings, not the same. My darling, if you are not taking care of your parents, go <laughs> back. Don't wait for Mother's Day. Don't wait for Father's Day. Don't even wait for Christmas. Let them be part, just like you are taking care of your children today. Add your parents to it. Mm -hmm. Take good care of them. And trust me, when they leave, they won't just leave. They will leave with blessing. And after they leave, they become, especially if your parents um, die as believers, after they have left, they are not just gone. No. They are not gone. They become like guardian angels, fighting on our behalf. They are so close to God. So when they pray to God in heaven, God will hear and do it faster than you will pray here on earth. Reverend Joe, I know you want to add something to it. Um, I'm talking about we looking at our future. Um, you have no kids. 70 years and above, what happens? Are you thinking about it? And... What are you doing in place? Um, now I am taking care of my parents. Somebody would say, maybe if my parents didn't have children, there would have been no one to take care of them. Are you thinking about your future in terms of what your children, your biological children, would have done for you in your old age? Um, my brother said it just the way I was going to say mm. I believe that, of course, kids will take care of, we expect our kids to take care of, that's but I don't right. fully believe that kids are it, security for your future. That's right. You can invest in your child as much as you want. The success of the child will depend, one, like if you that. take care of you. The success Number, of the child. Yes. And second, the child can be successful, but will not take care of you. Mm. So one is about prayers. Mm. That I pray that the Lord gives you good health. Mm. Number two, it's about yourself mm. that you plan for your future. Yeah. Like my wife says, so you, you invest in your future, mm. especially in this part of the world. Yeah. You wouldn't need anybody if you plan very well okay. to live a very good life. Mm. Number three, I have seen people who, who rather take care of their kids at an old age. Recently, a man was given a ticket. Mm. He is 90 years old. Yeah. And he came to the court mm. and was given a ticket. He said, please, I was taking my child to the hospital. hospital. So yeah. the, doc, the judge was like, ah. You, how old are you? I'm 90. How old is your child? This is 60. So I have to take him to the, for dialysis twice wow. a week. Wow. Because he has kidney failure. Wow. I've seen people whose children have killed them. Wow. We saw one in Manhattan. We saw one in Newton, mm. Connecticut. And so to me, I'm not anxious about the future. That is in the hands of the Lord. Mm. And so what, what will happen to me in the future? I will do my humanly possible best. Mm by planning for my retirement okay. here, and I leave the rest with God. Okay. So it's not something that I, I, I it cross my mind sometimes, mm. but it's not something that I sit down and brood mm. upon mm. and say, so when I grow old, who mm. will take care of mm. me? Mm. If I live a good life, I plan my retirement well, I'd rather be given to people, and I will live a okay. better life. In her workplace, people come who are 90, who are still driving, because they are healthy, they live in the house alone. I met a woman who was 99 years old, living alone, driving her bands and happily wow. because he planned her life well wow. and God has given her good health. Wow. So the future for me is not to brood upon. I'd rather enjoy my life as I live and leave the rest for God. And don't you also think that as individuals with or without children because I always say that and especially in our um, African proverb nobody knows who will take care of you tomorrow yes. so because we don't know who will take care of us tomorrow um it could be your biological children or it could be somebody else why don't you with or without children invest in the lives of people yeah. i believe that if you are investing in the lives of people one person i'm telling you will be there for you i know you people have been you want to say yes. something i've been investing yes. 
in the lives yes. of people. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. So yeah. Um, so I want to use my mom as mm. example. Mm. So we have an adopted brother. Mm -hmm. that, it was uh, my mother's friend who, when she was dying, mm -hmm. said, I don't even want the child's father to take care of him. I want you, my friend, Mama Corns, to take care mm. of this boy. Mm. He was four years old. He was four Which years, two. Two years old. Two yeah. years old. He wow. was two years when my mother took him in and raised him and grew with my brother, Pastor wow. Gideon. And it's amazing how you said that. So long story short, this boy also traveled to Europe, mm -hmm. went to school there. All of a sudden came to Ghana when Pastor Gideon was not there, came to live with my mother. Wow. When my, my mother's biological daughter was not there, the adopted son was there. And did, can you believe that it was the adopted son that my mother died in his hands? His hands. Wow. And he took very good care of my mother. Wow. He handled all the mortuary stuff, uh, everything wow. while we were here. Wow. So, like you said, if you invest in people, definitely they will remember. You, you will not say everybody will remember, just yeah. like even children of yeah. your own. Not everyone mm. will remember, but mm. I believe that mm. uh, God will cause somebody, like he caused Parkwesi to be there for my wow. mother and still that he, he only wow. knows my mother as his mother. Wow. So investing in people is wow. very critical. Wow, wow. And, and for us, like, even my houseboy that I used to live with, I mean, I, we took him like our son. Okay. We raised him, we paid his school fees, we married him. I mean, even if when you you're married for him. I mean, he <laughs> went ahead and went and got a pregnancy, but we accepted them and did all the um, marriage uh, rights for him. And so when he had her, we married, I mean, his first. Wow. Wow. I mean, took over everything. Wow. And even her, his sister. Sister too. So came to live with us. Wow. Married in our house. We wow. gave her out wow. from wow. Yeah. So wow. investing in people. So this boy and you were that, saying that your house this, boy when yeah, he had this his first born. born he said, Yeah. The, I mean he named her after me. Ben. Wow. Yeah. Wow. My darling, don't eat alone. No. <laughs> don't chop alone. And don't don't do uh, me, my mm. wife. And my children alone, or me, my husband, and my children alone. We know of people who had biological children. Their children were successful, but yet never took care of their parents. And we know of people who went out of their way to help people in the neighborhood, paid people school fees, fed people. When they were old and their biological children were not there, those people were there for them. Yeah. My darling, invest in lives. If you eat alone, <laughs> I don't want to continue. If you eat alone, the American will say, you go to the bathroom alone. You go to the washroom alone. Invest in the lives of people. My darling, invest in the lives of people. Take, pick somebody off the street. Pay somebody school fees. Feed somebody. Clothe somebody tomorrow after you have placed laughter on their faces, a smile on their face, and laughter in their mouth. Tomorrow, they would also be there to make you laugh and they will make you smile. What we are going to do is last week there were so many questions we couldn't answer. I would do the attempt. I don't know how many more minutes I have left, but we will make the attempt to go through some of the questions. If I'm not able to finish, I would answer your questions next week. And let your questions keep coming and we will, we will answer them in due course. Reverend Joe and Mama Betty, somebody says, I've been watching the family, the family life program for some time now. It has educated me a lot. God bless you. Thank you. 
And the person says, I am a married woman with two kids. I have been married for seven years. For seven years now. My husband hasn't been working for the past five years. And it's just been me helping out. He has left everything on me. Leaving me sometimes frustrated and worn out. Sometimes I want to quit the marriage entirely. What do I do about this? <laughs> People think that ma marriage is <laughs> a bed of roses. I know. Yeah. So she's asking the question. Sometimes she feels like quitting. She's the only one. They've been married for seven years. They have two kids. The man is not working. She's the only one who's been working for five years. And she feels, she, she feels so frustrated. And sometimes she wants to call it a quit. Reverend Joe, she's asking what she must do. Yeah. Maybe she wants you to tell her to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I would have wished that I know why the man is not working yeah. in the first place. Mm. But I have, I know it, there are situations where the men are lazy mm. and wouldn't want to work because he thinks that what the woman is bringing in is enough. Mm. And so he doesn't have to do anything. Mm. Or he thinks that the woman is doing well and that being lazy, he doesn't want to bring in anything. But in such circumstances, as children of God, first you have to pray about the situation. Mm. But that is not the only thing you have mm. to do. You need to now come, with, with, come in with some elders. Mm. I believe she has sat down with the man mm. and spoken to so mm. much. But come in with the elders and now speak to him. If mm. he doesn't do it, make your intentions known to him. Mm. That if things doesn't change, mm. you are making a decision. Mm. For some men, that puts them on their feet. Mm. Because <laughs> some men take women for granted. Mm. Because for women, because of you have kids and you love your kids so much, they know that if they don't do it, you will kill yourself to do it. Yeah. And they take advantage of the love you have for the family. Secondly, sometimes you, the woman, want to cover the man's shame. Mm. So whatever happens, you try to pay the rent, you try to do it, and they take, a, they, they take advantage of that. Mm. So there's, you should sit down with him. Mm. If he's not working, you bring in an elderly, your pastor or something, mm. and now end the conversation mm. with that statement. Mm. But if things doesn't change, I'm making a decision. Mm. And this can cause a man to sit up. Mm. But I wish I knew why he hasn't worked for a long time. But if it's out of laziness, I think this is the right course to take. Mm. Mama Betty, do you have anything to add to it? Yes, I, I would like to add something. I mean, I mean it can be very frustrating yeah. when it's just one income with family. Mm. Um, so I pray that um, you're in, but because you are watching us, I believe that you are in church. Mm. So like Reverend Joe said, prayer is the key. Mm. Keep praying about it, but then sit your husband and have conversation have conversation with with him and and like put things in place and say honey why I mean it's five years now uh, if you can go do something or get a job so that this family can um, live a little better because when there's only one we come uh, there's there's tension and the relationship even suffers mm. so it's important that the man goes out to work. But don't quit yet. Mm. There, there is hope mm. with prayer and with conversation and just talking and sometimes threatening mm. that if you don't do this, then I'm going to make a decision. Mm. I've seen people, like a couple that we counsel, that the woman came to that point and now the man is out there looking to work. Mm. So it works that way. Mm. You had Reverend Joe and and mama betty well if the man is lazy then please stop hampering him <laughs> but if the man is not lazy but then he's not getting a job i don't know where you send the message from but these days especially with the COVID, things are very tough in ghana so if the man is not getting a job um, he's tried and he's not getting it. Um, you need to make room for him. But then I always tell men who are not working, yes, you don't have a job. You are not working. But there's something you could do. You could be tidying up the house. You could be washing the dishes. You can be cooking. If by the time the woman comes from work, 
you have cooked, tidied up the house, laid the bed, um, um, supervised the children's school um, homework. I don't think that, you know, she'll be that frustrated. I believe that she, she will go out there and work like she's working for two. But what is annoying, very, very annoying, is that she's the one bringing income home. She's the one who must cook. She's the one who must take care of the children. She's the one who must bathe the children. She, I mean, mm. it, it, it can be very, very frustrating. So if your husband is lazy, call him before elders. If you belong to a church, call him before your pastor that you've had enough for five years and that if he doesn't set up you are going to divorce him. But then, if he's not working because he doesn't get a job, then please exercise a bit of patience um, and encourage him to do things in the house. Uh, we heard Reverend Joe last week that when he came into this country, for six months, um, he wasn't working. It was the wife's income. It was the wife who was taking care of the home. But as a wise husband, he also decided to do something. What he did was that he learned how to cook. So by the time his wife came home, there was food. I believe he was the one tidying up the home and all that. And this is not the first time I've heard such, you know, a testimony. Um, I believe that if both of you are helping each other, you know, your wife will not be that frustrated. Thank you. Somebody says, Mama Rita, your program is so wonderful and sweet. <laughs> so the person is talking about last week's program. Your program is so wonderful and sweet. I enjoy it very much. Wish to see you in person sometime. Thank you. If you want to see me, you would always get me in Royal House Chapel. Um, I don't know where... You are sending a message from, but if you live in Accra, you can make time with me any Sunday after first service. You don't need an appointment to see me, please. If anybody comes to you and says you can't see Mama Rita, tell the person, you, I don't know whether you're a son or a daughter. I don't know <laughs> uh, whether it's a male or a female, but tell the person, you are, you are Mama Rita's daughter or Mama Rita's son through family life. Don't let anybody stop you from coming to me. Um, there's another question. Please, my question is, how do you end a relationship? A, if you attend the same church and your children attend the same church, my partner and I have been together for two years. And planning to get married early next year. Recently, I overheard a conversation with my partner and a lady. He had a ch with a lady he had a child with with four years oh four years ago. According to him, the lady refused to give the pregnancy to him at the time, but insisted he was responsible. I told him, solve the problem with, with the lady. He already has four children from a, prev a previous marriage, hey, and I have one daughter. My problem is my partner visits the lady every day and leaves her place very late. <laughs> he never picks my calls when he gets there. Mm. This lady calls, her, calls him every day, and they can talk for a long time, mm. and even lies, I don't know, and even tell lies. I've tried, and I want to quit. Mm. So I think... Um, what she's saying is that they both belong to the same church and their children, in other words, maybe his children and her children all belong to the same church. But then 
there is a woman that has come in between them. Um, I think they are not married. I don't know whether they are married because she didn't state it, whether they are married or they are just in a relationship. Mm. Um, please, when you ask your questions, be a bit clear and specific so that we will be able to answer it. So either they are married or they are not married, but the way she says it, as though they are married and somebody the husband had um, a child with is now coming in and now she wants a quit and she doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the good thing, she, like you said, we are not very clear. Mm. But if, even if, assuming they are married or not, mm. the good place where you can have security, can have direction, is when you are in a church. Yeah. And thankfully enough, they are in a church. So with this, you need to contact the elders of your church yeah. and then make, them, make all these things known mm. to them. Because well, to me, I think that there's a danger the woman is entering into mm. if she's not married yet. Mm. You understand? Because for a man to have four and now goes, goes to go back with the one that he or she has with, then it means that he has not, he has not folded up in his last operations. Mm. And so you he need to that was <laughs> fold that up, up, up in, in the last operations. operations. <laughs> yes, yes, no, Please, you before return. you go to a new lady, fold up your last operation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so she, she, this is a sign that if you enter into the relationship and it's established, you're going to get a lot of challenges. So if they are not married, I'm saying that they should, he should, should not even get into mm. it. Call the elders of the church, mm. sit the man down. Mm. Don't go and say this is what he does, but all, everybody should be seated. Mm. And I know the man will deny mm. what you are saying, mm. but try to have your facts mm. straight. And then if you're not married, end it there mm. and do not mm. step into it formally. Mm. Else you're going to put yourself in danger. And if they are married? If they are married, this is also the same thing. You see, sometimes we say that in church, it is difficult. you don't have to get mm. divorced and things. Mm. And for that reason, we make women stay in relationship where they have a, very, a lot of emotional yeah. abuse and yeah. leads to depression and yeah. now have mental health issues. Yeah. In something like this, I believe that if she's stepping out of the relationship, mm. it should be allowed. Mm. Because we don't have to think that only when there's physical injury, mm. then that is when mm. people should be made mm. to walk out of mm. the... You know something? Emotional injury, emotional abuse is yeah. more, more hurting, more dangerous, mm. more devastating, and causes the woman to lose, lose her self-esteem, and for some, they can never get it back. And so in such a situation, seeing that as a pastor, seeing that my, my member is in such a situation, it's not going to affect her alone. It will affect even the children. Because one, the children will not have respect for marriage if they are girls. They will see how men do not... Most girls will say, I don't want to enter into marriage anymore. I don't want to get married. And people don't understand. It's how they've seen their parents or men treat their mothers. And so they decide not to go into it anymore. So for the safety of the kids and for their welfare and for their interest, I think that she should, there should be a way. After speaking to him, if he's not stopping, they give him a, a benchmark. If he doesn't get it to wait, I think that it is proper for it to be resolved. Yeah. Now, talking about the emotional abuse, mm. a lot of women are in, find themselves in, yeah. in situations yeah. like that. And, Especially in church. And, and in church. Wow. And in church. Um, and the pastors are saying that, that yes. they can't divorce. They can't divorce. Because divorce. Yes. God, God hates divorce. divorce. Yes, but then uh, what happens is they end up getting stroke. Mm. They end up getting mental issues. Mm. And, and I don't think God, I, I believe that God hates divorce. Mm. But I also believe that God did not, um, create us to get into a relationship that will kill us. Yeah, yeah. So you have to weigh if this thing mm. is going to kill you, mm. then I think God doesn't want you mm. to die in that relationship. Mm. I believe that when you are able to come out, God mm. will give you somebody mm. who will honor you and mm. respect you. Mm. So I believe that even as a church, mm. we shouldn't advocate that people live in the relationship, abusive relationship, yeah. till they yeah. die and yeah. then. We, yeah. we, we can't get yeah. them back. So yeah. it's very important. Yeah. People live in such relationships and they even commit suicide. Yeah. Yeah. And after which yeah. we, we say, the God, you're a Christian. Yeah. And, and another thing is that women should be taught, to be taught 
to bring out marital issues to their pastors and their leaders. Yeah, like for some that. women, they want Please to... Please tell them. I don't want... And if a man tells you, don't let anybody hear yeah. of us, it means that that person is ready to abuse yeah. you. Thank we don't you. want nobody to hear about our problem. Yes. If nothing at all, I tell my members, if nothing at all, your pastor should be told when yeah. you're having challenges. Yeah. Or the one who did premarital counseling for you. But if your husband is bitchy, he said, no, I don't want anybody to hear about mm. our business, and you say into it, you are going to die. Yeah. And God doesn't like that. Mm. Mm. It's rather for you to walk out of it than to have a, commit suicide or be abused to the a point of getting depression and getting mental issues. So, my darling, this is a red flag. Um, your question was not too clear. If you are in the relationship and you are not married yet, my darling, this is a red flag. Advise yourself. If you are married and you are saying that both of you are in the same church, I believe that um, you have elders you can see too, you can go to them, you have counselors, and you can also go to your pastor. And I always say that if you belong to a church that the pastor is not matured enough to handle such issues, if you are in Accra, you can make your way to Royal House Chapel Ahimfie, and I can make any of our seasoned counselors handle you. Or if I'm available, I will handle you myself. I don't know how many more minutes we have, but we can take a question or two. And like I, I always say, don't worry if I don't answer your question. We will certainly answer them in, in other episodes. I have been living with this guy for 12 years with just the knocking down. And we have four kids mm -hmm. at the moment. Mommy, nowadays, let me first tell them what knocking is. Um, I don't know if this happens in every part of Africa, but. In, in the Ghanaian tradition, um, before the traditional marriage, um, you do what we call knocking. Knocking is just introducing yourself to the bride's uh, parents that, oh, um, this is my girlfriend I am going out with. Please allow me, and I hope a lady is listening. Knocking means that permission from your parents to make him go out with you, to start courtship. That is knocking. Knocking is not marriage. So um, knocking is the first one we do before the traditional marriage. These days, what people even do is that on the day of the traditional marriage, they do everything. They do the knocking, and then they can go ahead with a traditional marriage. But others decide to do the knocking first for one reason. Number one, either the lady is pregnant and you want to officially let the parents know that, oh, I am the one responsible. This is something I'm using to knock, to say that if I'm given the permission, I will come in to perform the other rites. Or um, she's not, she's not um, pregnant, but then um, I want your permission as parents to start seeing your, your daughter. So this is what knocking is about. Um, some people do not know knocking. They don't understand what knocking is. After they're knocking, they just move on and then they leave with the men. So the gentleman is saying that, Mommy, nowadays the lady, at the slightest provocation, he rains all insults on me. My greatest worry now are the kids. Mm -hmm. And I also do not want to destroy their future. Please, what do I do? I don't know if the children have a future right now. under, under um, so such circumstances. Yeah. So she said she doesn't know what to do, number one. And she's been living with a man for 12 years mm -hmm. uh, with just a bottle of alcohol. Um, they have, I don't know how many children, four children, and now the man keeps raining insults on her, and she doesn't know what to do. 
and all she's thinking about is the children. Yeah. Can I answer? Yeah. Okay. Mama Betty. Sure. Yeah. Like Mama Rita explained what knocking is. Uh, so knocking is not the actual marriage. So yeah. staying, allowing herself to stay in there f and four children. I believe that's why the man is taking advantage yeah. of her. So if um, the proper thing could be done by talking to the man to actually perform all the marriage rights and to have the full marriage and and I believe that when that happened, when that happened, sorry, I'm sure there's going to be some respect. I don't know what the, circum the, the situation of the man is if he doesn't want to just go ahead with it, but to live with a woman for tw uh, 12 years and not marry the woman, that is, um, it leaves much to be desired. Mm. Mm. And I'm sure that he, she's thinking about the kids, but already the kids are in bad mm. state mm. already. So mm. it's up, it's, it's, up to her to make a very firm decision. Mm. It's either you're going to marry me, mm. or if not, then I'm going to take mm. my kids, mm. and we have um, mm. ways to raise mm. the kids. I mean, your involvement mm. and your contribution to raise the kids, and so that she can move mm. on mm. instead of staying there and being abused mm. again in mm. this circumstances. That's mm. my take on that. Mm. Reverend Joe. Mm. Yeah, I, I first will say that. If something doesn't cost a person, mm. the person doesn't value it. I like that. Please so repeat it. If something Rewind. doesn't cost a person, mm -hmm. the person wouldn't value yes. the thing. I like that. And so the way with which the man got the woman, mm. that it didn't cost mm. him much, and mm. so he doesn't place value mm. on it. And mm. the woman allowing herself to mm. go that far mm. doesn't place value mm. on it. And I want to take this opportunity to put out some points for women. You see, when you are courting and well, when you are in a relationship dating before you get into marriage, there you should have your own values that you put on the table. This is who I am, this is what I want, and this is how I want to do my things. If you don't place your values on the table, mm. you follow the value of your partner. Mm. And so for this one, I believe that she didn't, she didn't put any of value on it, mm. that she mm. values mar marriage, mm. that marriage should be blessed, mm. that things should be that before mm. I... Mm. have issues mm. with you mm. and so now she's not living the life that she wants mm. but she's living the life of that man and so she's walking in the in the shadows of that man and the man will not give you that respect and so if the man has not done the, re the natural thing that he has done and he's not showing you any respect I believe that at this point she's getting fed up at this point she's realizing who the mistake she's done and like Mabeti said it is time for her to set up mm. have a discussion with the man and if the man is not ready to put, mm. give her that mm. honor and dignity as a wife, mm. then he can, she has every right to walk away with the mm. kids and, mm. for the, and then mm. the, woman, the man held responsible mm. or, and participate in the upbringing of the kids. That's good. But uh, to, it says, why do, you, why do I buy the whole cow if I can get the milk for free? Eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. So the man is taking advantage of her. Definitely. Our time is up, but I want to take just two short questions. Somebody says, Mama, I have one boy with a lady. We stay together for six years now. We now want to make things right. God bless this gentleman mm -hmm. uh, for making things right. We now want to make things right. Mama, please, do we have to use two rings or one? Save us from Sogakope. Save us from Sogakope. Normally, this is what happens. Biblically, if you don't pay your tithes, there's a pastor here, if I'm <laughs> lying. If you don't pay your tithes and you decide to pay it, it means that you owe God. Yes. I teach that. You teach that. Yes. So what percentage do you add to it? Twenty percent. You add twenty percent. This is something a lot of Christians don't know. Yeah. Or they know it and they refuse <laughs> to know it. Right. So if you owe God for two months and you decide to go and settle with God, just like when you owe somebody, you owe the bank, you did 
don't go and give the money. You add interest, interest. to it. In, 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 in God's legal term, mm -hmm. you must pay God interest by adding 20%. So if you've been married to this woman for six years, you haven't done anything, not even knocking, and now you want to get married, you need to do things <laughs> right. Um, two rings, one is, is the traditional marriage. So anybody that sees this ring, my first one, shows that traditionally my husband doesn't owe my family. Mm. He's done everything that he needs to do traditionally. My father can't um, come and say, you owe me. He's performed every, every um, right. So this is the traditional ring. So you need this one when you do what we call engagement in Ghana. Um, that is the traditional marriage. And if you want to only do the traditional marriage, which is considered as legal marriage in Ghana, then all you need is just this ring. And I don't know who designed it, but it is round with a stone on it. And anybody with this stone means that the person is legally, traditionally married. Then, if you want to do the white wedding, which I don't even call the white wedding, uh, you want to do blessings, or what the legal people would say, um, type three, um, we used to call it the marriage of ordinance, but now we are taught that it's type three. If you want the type three, then you need um, a second, a second one. Um, actually, the second one looks like a wedding ring, but this is not my wedding ring. Unfortunately, I can't find my wedding, <laughs> my wedding <laughs> ring. I do kill you. Um, you know what I did. <laughs> I cleaned it nicely and I said I wasn't going to wear it until my daughter's wedding. Oh. I hid it somewhere no, you can't a monopost. Now I can't remember <laughs> where I hid the thing, but I know <laughs> it's there. I mean, it's not lost, but um, I cleaned it nicely and when the thing came, the way the thing was shining, I said, this one, I won't wear it until... My daughter gets married, and unfortunately, I didn't get to wear it. So this one can't be a wedding ring. So I'm using it as my wedding ring. But actually, this is a ring my husband gave me on our 25th wedding anniversary. Um, he said he wanted to marry me again. So this one means that marriage for life. I can't go anywhere. He can't go anywhere. Our souls are knitted together forever. So, but this one, um, I would say is luxury or when you are married for so many years and now you want to make your ha wife happy to let her know that, listen, if I even die and there's anything like coming back to the world, I am not marrying anybody <laughs> else. I am marrying you. You give this one, which we call eternity, but you don't really need this. So all you need is the two rings. You need the traditional one. And then you need the legal one, the one, no, traditional is also legal by the laws of Ghana. Um, but you need what we say, the, the type three. Type three means that one husband, one wife. The traditional one means that your husband can marry hundred if he mm. wants to. But the type three means that after we do the type three, you can't marry anybody else except your wife. So uh, my gentleman from Sogakope, Sifas from Sogakope, I think you need the two. But what people don't know is that we have very cheap rings. You don't need to get very expensive ones. And when my husband and I got married, uh, my husband would say that what we used was um, <laughs> something below, it was even below copper. copper. And I used it for 10 years. It was so cheap, but that is what we could afford at the time. My darling, if you see me today and you envy me, mm. I always say it. You are just envying me. Oh, I've suffered before. Oh. I've suffered before. My engagement, I did it twice. That's yeah. what people don't know. Yeah. 
My friend, the first one my husband brought. Oh, it was his trunk and his trouble from school. <laughs> the cloth was borrowed. <laughs> the, my diary was checked. He got from somebody. <laughs> but one thing my husband did that I will forever honor him. Three years after we married, he said to me, um, let's go, let me see your parents. I said, what for? He didn't tell me anything. He said, I said, I want to see your parents. And in those days, if your husband says, I want yeah. to see your parents, that means that you have done That's something. something yeah. And you, you are going to be reported. So I said, have I done anything? He said, follow me. We went there. When I got there, I was shocked. Family members were guarded. What was it? My husband said three years ago, the traditional marriage he did, he didn't do it well. So he's mm -hmm. coming to do yeah. it again. The cloth, he didn't bring. He's bringing it. The suitcases, he didn't bring. He's bringing it. The diary that he didn't bring, he's bringing it. I was crying. My parents <laughs> were crying. My siblings were crying. Um, so, my darling, I always tell people, cut your coat according, according to, to your, your size. size. Um, and the women must understand. If you want to be married the right way, you must understand the pocket of your husband, if he doesn't have, let him do what he can afford it. So what we did, our first um, um, engagement wasn't good. The ring was even coming from my mom. It was my mom's engagement ring. Yeah, okay. That is what she removed, and we went to do it. Wow. But in those days, the ring was big, but the man added, I don't know what they add to it, whether plenty copper. <laughs> <laughs> to it. So, so I wore the thing a week after the thing was sold. It. <laughs> but that's all we could afford. So I used that ring for 10, ten years. Mm. Then after 10 years, God blessed me. And then my husband changed the rings. Um, <coughs> and I used that ring for another 15 years. And then finally, 25 years in marriage, mm. I got this. I don't think this one I will change. This one will be for life. Well, I don't know. So please, if your husband can't afford it, um, let, let him buy what he can. There are, if you are in Ghana, there are rings in Mokola, copper rings. They are not expensive. Wear it the first few years, and then when God blesses you, you could go ahead and then, and then um, get new ones. I thought I could take a second question, but it looks like um, our time is... Oh, my God. This question, as for this question, I leave my co-host to, to ask this question. The question is deep. <laughs> we, will, we will go into it next week. But um, Reverend Joe and Mama Betty, thank you so much. I have really, really enjoyed you. And when the thing is, it's getting nice. I don't even look at the time. Yeah. And I think I've gone beyond my time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. May God bless you. Amen. May the God of your father, the God of the Apostle General, the God of some Christian crowd whom you serve and you have served, may that God bless you. Amen. Latter rain, may the latter rain fall over your Amen. life. You would never lack. Amen. You would never want. Amen. Even in your old age, Amen. the people that, that you have taken care of, the people that you have invested in will be there for you. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. From the studio or the studios of Royal House Chapel, New York, Latter Rain Center, I say God bless you and have a good night. My darling, next week, we are all flying back to Ghana. You flew in with me. I don't know which airport you came through, but I think your time is up and you need to go back to Ghana. So we are all going back to Ghana next week. Next week, I will be in the studio um, of Royal House Chapel, Anifie. God bless you and I love you. From all the team, of Latter Rain Center. We say God bless you and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.